Okay, good morning everyone. It's now four minutes to 11, and I'm just advising you, we will be starting promptly at 11. I think it was import it's important for you to be aware of that. So we'll be starting promptly at 11. You may continue chatting as you have been doing, all right, until 11 o'clock. I will introduce myself then. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, my family, my friends, and all with well-wishers of Muriel Molly Bayer. Well, we know her as Auntie Molly. I am one of the many nephews that she has. And, I'm, and I said welcome this morning. Our time together is a time of celebration and thanksgiving for Auntie Molly. It's not a time of mourning. It's a time of thanksgiving. And I want us to feel happy because we have the body of someone who lived a past 100 years. Amen. I am hoping that I will reach that someday. So we want to begin this morning with the hymn, How Great Thou Art, and I would like you to join me in standing as we sing, How Great Thou Art. Good 
music supposed to be in the program? Oh Lord my God When I in awesome wonder Consider all the works thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout the universe display Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee How great Thou art, how great Thou art Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee How great Thou art Of God his son not sparing Sent him to die I scarce can take it in Died on the cross My burdens gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art When Christ shall come With shouts of admiration And oh, what joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim my God afraid thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Blessed assurance, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a forte. Of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Oh, this is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect salvation. Is not rare. Visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy. We 
whispers of love This is my story This is my song This is my Savior All the day long This is my story This is my song Praise my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior, I'm happy and blessed, watching and waiting. In above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long, praising my Savior all the day long. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And with Auntie Molly, we want to continue praising our Lord all the day long. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Lyndon Bayer. My family and those who know me many years ago will know me as Ronnie. It's the same person. I haven't changed my name. It's still Ronnie. You could call me Ronnie. You could call me Lyndon Bayer. I want to call now my cousin, Glenn Bayer, who is going to do the opening prayer. Thank you very much, Ronnie. Let's pray. Almighty God, we are saddened for this day. We have lost our mother. We pray today asking you for your courage, fill our spirits with strength, and let us be grateful for the life you gave us. Because of her, we got to live in this world. Let us learn from her selfless nature. We pray for her soul, Give her a resting place in paradise until we meet again. Let us learn from the good values she left us. Wipe our tears and help us move on. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Glenn. May I invite you to have your seats? And I will now invite Anderson Julian to do the eulogy. In the vast tapestry of life, there are those rare individuals who embody the very essence of love and wisdom, leaving an indelible mark on the sands of time. Today we gather to honor the memory of Muriel Bayer, a beacon of love whose legacy stands as a testament to a life lived with unwavering courage and an unyielding spirit of compassion. Good morning, everyone. My name is Anderson. I am Granny Molly's second of three grandkids. I grew up with my grandmother, more affectionately known as Mommy Molly, and I've known her all my life. 
I would like to thank all of you for attending today as we honor her life and memory. Your presence means a great deal to our family, and I am humbled to have the opportunity to share some cherished moments of my grandmother with you. To be honest, I had a very difficult time writing this eulogy because it is very near impossible to do justice to the wonderfully long and meaningful life my grandmother had. So it is in this aspect that I humbly seek your forgiveness as I attempt to convey my message in the time allotted. <sighs> Mommy Molly was one of eight children born to Annelisa and Alonzo Bayer in the town of Arima. She attended Arima Girls Government Primary School, after which her time was spent tending to the various farm animals Mother Bayer raised alongside the extensive Anthurium flower beds. A time in a life which I am certain instilled core values of independence, commitment, and resilience. During this time, she also engaged in domestic work within the neighborhood. Later on in life, Mami Molly acquired employment at the laundry department at the Colonial Hospital, which, during her tenure, had a name change to the Port of Spain General Hospital, as we all know today. She retired nearly 40 years after her dedicated service. Granny went on to have three children, Marilyn, Glenn, and my mother, Yvette. Before my time, I was told that my granny was an avid partier, enjoying the company of her siblings and friends while visiting Calypso tents and other party venues. This was a time when two, bet, two pennies would get you a ride up Arima and in, in one of the three existing taxis that worked the route. Mother Bayer would exclaim, how does house smell in sweet so? And from that you would know the crew was getting ready to bust a lime, sometimes passing to purchase 12 paradise plums on the way, which at the time cost one cent. At night, a mere three streetlights adorned the length of Cookery Road, during which she enjoyed random midnight walks with friends. She was a very sociable person, a virtue that came by force living in a house with seven other siblings and mother buyer. Home was always a bustle of activity, especially when niece and nephews and friends were around. As you all know, Grannies are supposed to spoil their grandkids. And Mommy Molly did not disappoint. My brother and I would be excited as kids receiving random toys whenever she felt like it. The baking of fresh bread and cakes and other sweets created an unforgettable euphoria surpassing anything you can buy in a shop to date. When Granny traveled outside Trinidad, it was like Christmas when she returned. I even remember our first color TV. Yep, that was Granny. And then there were the captivating life lessons and stories of when she was younger and how things were back then. A simpler time. My granny was a private person with a calm, at, at times humorous demeanor. Her, pa her patience and compassion for family were insurmountable. She worked hard to provide for us and did all of what and did all of that without ever complaining, despite the challenges she faced. I vividly remember waking up early on Sundays to prepare for church. Granny decked in her Sunday best, leading as me and my brother as little kids. We wiggled and squirmed with sleep in our eyes. I miss those days. Mami Molly was a confident, independent individual with a strength and determination that was evident in every aspect of her life. Her wisdom, guidance, 
and support have been influential in creating the person that stands before you today. I consider myself and my family fortunate for having such a wonderful person in our lives and for so long. In closing, Mami Molly, I would like to thank you for your sacrifices, your support and concern, your love. Sorry, I can't see. <laughs> Mami Molly, I would like to thank you for your sacrifices, your support and concern, your love and everything that you've done for this family. May we live our lives with the same grace, compassion and vibrancy that you showed us every day. Mami Molly, you, have, you may have left this world, but your spirit remains a guiding light in our lives. Rest in peace, dear Granny, knowing that you were deeply loved and will be forever remembered. May heaven's gate stand open for you. Thank you. I know we can do better than that. Let's give... And Auntie Molly would have had value and touch all, all of our lives as her nephews and nieces. As we continue with our time of celebration this morning, I want to invite Andre Julian, who is going to do the scripture reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. Good morning, everyone. For those who don't know, I'm the um, older brother of my younger brother there. Um, so I'm, I want to read a scripture verse. I'm reading from the New International Version. It says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in debt, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Thank you very much, Andre. And as we continue, I would like to invite Pastor Russell Bayer, who is going to share God's word with us this morning. Simon. Son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Permit me also to extend my condolences to my family members as well, as well as to neighbors and well wishes in this sorrowful yet joyful and solemn occasion 
in the passing of a loved one one who has had the honor the blessing the privilege to be among those in that special league of centenarians and I'm sure that all of us though we are rightfully sorrowful because she has gone on and she has left us I'm sure that we are thankful to God that he allowed her that privilege to reach such a beautiful and wonderful age and I'm sure that someone who has lived that kind of length of time have a lot of stories that they can tell us. Personal stories, stories probably based on the community in which they lived at the time, as well as stories that might relate to national events. And I hope that those who were closest to her would have had the opportunity to capture some of those beautiful stories. The God of the Bible is a God of second chances. For good uses. And I must include that, for good uses. Because we can get second chances and abuse it or misuse it. So the God of the Bible is a God of second chances for good uses. I submit to you that no man who has ever walked the face of this earth after the fall of Adam, except one man, Jesus Christ, I submit to you that no one is immune to failures. No one is immune to errors. No one is immune to stumbling. No one is immune to making missteps, bad choices. And the list could go on and on and on. And since no one is immune to that, I submit to you then that all men are in need of second chances or second opportunities to correct the wrong that may have been done. We cannot go back in time and probably change and repeat the circumstance and, and undo it. But we could only hope that if it comes wrong again, we will not make the same wrong choice that we would have made before. God who created all mankind created man one hundred percent perfect flawless everything he made perfect 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 flawless to the point where at the end of every work day he said it was good and i'm sure that you and i who engage daily labor when we leave our work for the day maybe sometimes it's not too good but i'm sure that there are times when we leave and we were satisfied oh, Today was a good day, boy. <laughs> I give them an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. And we are satisfied. Maybe it took a lot of energy, but we were still satisfied and content knowing that at the end of the day, we did our work to the best of our ability and we are satisfied. And I'm sure that you who love to cook, if you try out some new dish, I'm sure, I'm sure, 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 that the end of it you like to know oh, this thing tastes real good. <laughs> and you're willing to share it. But as the Bible tells us, these people who were created flawless and perfect, they messed up. They sinned. They made bad choices. They erred. They transgressed. They misstepped, etc., etc., etc. And God, who is 
a God of second chances for good uses if he wanted to. And it would have been within his right. He could have destroyed them and start over afresh. <clears throat> but the Bible doesn't tell us that he did that. He banished them from that beautiful environment of the Garden of Eden. And he sent them out, still with the commission to be fruitful and multiply and replenish, etc., etc., etc. That having been done, all of us here today and all mankind who lived upon the face of the earth, who had the opportunity to be born, had the same verdict from God. What's that verdict? Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. For that all, prime minister, president, king, queen, a rich person, beggar, homeless, you name it, all have sinned. Just by being born. <laughs> we didn't have the opportunity to make a choice or decision as yet. And the verdict from God is that we have all sinned. But he's a God of second chances for good use. So what does the Bible tell us? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever among all men who have sinned among all men whom he pronounced guilty, whosoever would believe on his son, Jesus Christ, will not perish, but have everlasting life. God of chances, second chances, sorry. It continues and it tells us in another place, and at the times of ignorance, God winked at, but now commanded. Every man, rich, poor, good, bad, well-behaved, intellectual, all men, everywhere, to do what? Repent. Have a change of heart. Have a change of mind. Have a change of attitude. And listen to what he says again in another place. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land... Or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. What a God of second chances. <laughs> and last but not least, he says to us, come, let us reason together. <laughs> Said the Lord, do your sins be as scarlet. They shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wood. What a promise. <laughs> so anybody tell you that God is a God of vengeance and he is merciful? No, 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 no. Not God, not the God of the Bible, not the God who created the heavens and the earth. He's a God of second chances for good use. Listen to what he says again. Let your remorse tear at your hearts and not your garments. Because in those days, Part of the outward evidence of the act of repentance was their tearing of their clothes, ripping up their clothes. So once you see a man ripping up his clothes, you know, hey, this man is engaging in some kind of act of repentance. God said, let your remorse tear at your hearts, and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. He is gracious and merciful. He is not easily angered. He is full of kindness and anxious not to punish you. 
And the list could go on and on and on. Somebody who benefited from uh, God's giving of second chances for good use was a man who was dying next to his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross of Calvary. He was a thief, a bandit. And I have a, I have a little theory. All bandits are potential rapists and murderers. That's just my thought. All of them. They are potential rapists and potential murderers. They distress you. They take from you and from me and from anybody else by force what is ours. And they are prepared to stop you from keeping your thing. I don't know. They didn't tell us what the thief stole. They didn't tell us how long he was in the activity of stealing. But here he is, having faced the trial, having been found guilty, and is going through the, 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 the punishment stage, which was death. And he's hanging on the cross. He troubled man. He deprived man of their goods. He was tried by man. He was found guilty by man. And he's now being punished by man. But next to him, there was somebody who came for the purpose of giving second chances. And thank God this thief, this bandit, this potential rapist and murderer, noticed that, recognized him. And in the nick of time, by the skin of his teeth, he said to him, remember me when you go on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> did he hear Jesus preaching on the street before I don't know maybe he used to pass by Jesus having the crusade and turn up his nose or whatever it is and go his way but not today today was it today was an opportunity for him to grasp a second chance and he did Lord remember me when you come into your kingdom and thank God, Jesus say, hey, this day, you'll be with me in paradise. Simon, Simon, lovers down me. Jesus asked Simon. Because Simon, who was one of his disciples, a church boy, one of his leadership team, right there with Jesus, doing signs and wonders and miracles, Having the opportunity to walk on water, casting out devils, demons, feeding the multitude with five loaves and 2,000 fishes. That was Peter. But when Jesus was captured and arrested, Peter denied knowing Jesus. How painful that must have been to Jesus. How agonizing that must have been to Jesus. But here is this man who was with me for approximately three years. Saw all those wonderful miracles and signs and wonders and, and benefited from, oh my God. And yet still, when I needed him most, he says, not once, <laughs> not twice, but three times, I don't know him. Jesus was crucified. He was raised up from the dead. And he comes back now and he's having a next encounter with Peter. And he's given Peter a second chance to dig deep inside of him and to confess openly his true intention and desire and mindset and attitude towards Jesus. So he asked him once, 
No, that wasn't true. He asked him twice. No, that was still not true. He asked him three times. As though he's balancing every question with every denial. <laughs> Simon, do you love me? Maybe the first time was, yeah, the top of it said, yes, Lord, I love you. But he asked him again, Simon, do you love me? He's digging deeper inside of him. And what mistakes, what errors could you and I do in our lives? What's the worst thing that we could do that could hurt God deep down in his heart? And then God could find time afterwards to come and ask us, do you love me? What will our answer be? Let our answer be like Peter who grasps the opportunity for a second chance to do good. Say yes, Lord. <laughs> I failed. I messed up. I messed up. I did the wrong thing. But Lord, I really love you. And I'm sorry for the wrong which I have done. And that's what you and I faced with as long as we live. And Auntie Molly, who was no different from us, would have faced the face opportunity and challenged in all of her life, in all of her living. Unless she was 100% perfect, unless she was 100% flawless, I'm sure that she herself, in her lifetime, would have been glad and would have grasped and would have been afforded the opportunity for second chances. So you who are here today, like myself, let us be aware of God's given to us second chances and grasp it when we get that opportunity. Because it's available to all of us. For God, the God of the Bible, is a God of second chance. Let us pray. Father, thank you for second chances. For the purpose of doing good. And even as we continue to live our lives on this earth, may we ever always be conscious of those opportunities when they are afforded to us. And may we also use those opportunities to afford them to each other. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Russell Bayer. It's like a sailor moment that the, that the Psalms talk about. We have to kind of stop and consider and, we, and, I, and I'm encouraging you to consider what was said, not only now, but in the days ahead. I thank God for second chances. So today I could serve him. And I'm trusting that you too will seize that second chance and serve him. We have a special song now from Kemi. Is Kemi, that's how you pronounce the word, Kemi? Kemi Julian, so I want to invite Kemi Julian to do that special song for us. No 
one ever knows the time or space. Don't cry for me. Don't shed a tear. The time I spent with you will always be. And when I'm gone, still carry on. Don't cry for me. Is the blame no my death was meant to be so don't carry guilt or shame the reason why I came so you may see don't cry Don't shed a tear The time I spent with you will always be And when I'm gone Still carry on Don't cry not the way it should be and you may feel all alone but in time you will be rewarded and you will be appointed and all the world will see don't cry Don't cry for me, it will always be, don't cry for me. Thank you. Could we give another round of applause, please? Come on. Ah, God has blessed each one of us with different talents. Thank you very much, Kemi. And as we continue, as we look at our time, we'll, we'll call back Pastor Russell Bayer, who is going to do the final commendation and the closing prayer. And after that, we'll all stand together and sing those three songs down at the end of our program. Well, can we stand now? Is that okay if we stand now? Today is the last day that we will have the opportunity to view and to look at the physical body of a loved one as we are 
thankful for life as we take note of her departure. We still want to be able to let God be in charge and be involved in every aspect of it. So Almighty God, we with thankful but yet sorrowful hearts commend the soul of our loved one, mother, grandmother, neighbor, and that of Muriel Molly Bayer. As we acknowledge at this time, it is going to be consumed by fire. But we are in hope of the resurrection unto eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead. And the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body according to the working of his power whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. So today, Lord, we commit the body into your hands Though consumed by fire, we know that her soul is in your presence, and for that we are grateful. Let us now do the closing prayer. Almighty God, like as a father pities his children, so your word says that you pity those who respect you and fear you. Because you know it, our frame, and you remember that we are dust. And therefore we ask again at this time today for continued strength and comfort for the family of Muriel Molly Bayer, as they go through this period, this phase, this season of mourning. May they be to each other a source of comfort and encouragement. And may they also receive encouragement by our show of support and respect today and hereafter. May they in times of remembrance of their mother, of their grandmother, be thankful to you for the opportunity and the privilege that you gave her to be on this earth for 101 years. So Father, we pray that you would bless them. We ask that you would keep them. We ask that you would make your face to shine upon them and be gracious unto them. We ask that you would lift up your countenance upon them and grant them your peace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Before we sing the last songs, please take note that the family wishes to extend their heartfelt gratitude to you by offering you some refreshments on the way out. So please, when you're leaving, you can exit through this door and you will be greeted with some refreshments and an appreciation of their gratitude and thankfulness to you as well. Um, can we have the box open? So what we will do, because of time constraint, we, would, we can sing the first verse and then we can allow persons to do the viewing of the body for the very final time. So, sweet by and by. And so we could sing the first verse and then after that you can begin to view the body as you go. Down. 
Tis the land that is fairer than day And by faith we shall see it afar For the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet and once you can start viewing the body by and by, by, and by. we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore, in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore, we shall sing, we shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melodious songs of the blessed And our spirit shall sorrow no more Not aside for the blessing of rest Remember this is the last opportunity you have In the sweet, in the sweet By and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet, in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore To our bountiful Father above we will offer a tribute of praise For the glorious gift of His love And the blessings that the Lord days Oh, in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore There's a land that is fairer than day by faith we shall see it afar For the Father waits over the way Oh, in the sweet, in the sweet By and by In that beautiful show in the sweet by and by We shall see on that beautiful shore When the roll is, is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the trumpet of the Lord 
torch shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved of her shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder And cloudless morning, on that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen one shall gather to their home beyond the skies, and the roll is called up yonder, be the Let us labor for the master from the door till set in sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and the work under is done, and the goal is called up yonder, I'll be dear. When, when the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder I'll be dead when the roll is called up yonder I'll be dead when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there Lord.